verse 18. God's word says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Father God, your word is life. It's a command to our lives. Help us to hear, to listen, to understand, and to be obedient to your word, Father, to bring life, life into our lives, Father. In Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. We need to read the Bible with understanding and look at what it says here. Jesus came and spoke to his disciples, saying, You know, all the authority on heaven is mine. You know, all the authority here on earth is mine. And then the Bible also adds that one day, everything he shall bow in heaven, on earth, and in hell. There's no major authority here besides me. And nothing is done unless I allow it. So see, that is already a victory for us if we are his children. The only thing that we need to do now is understand the word, his will. Because he said, I am the way, meaning we need to walk in his path. I am the truth and we need to be truthful, align ourselves with the Bible. And I am life. We need to make sure we read it so we can breathe that life into us and understanding and wisdom. Feed the Holy Spirit. Empower the Holy Spirit with his word and be obedient to it. So we need to understand all of this is sure and guarantee victory. That's what he said. That's what he's saying to us. In the scripture today, Mark 16, verse 12 to 20, it says, After that, after he resurrected, he appeared in another form to two of them. As they walked in, went into the country. And they went and told it to the rest that they did not believe, but they did not believe in them. You know, they had just... Witness, the two women had witness about the, re- the resurrection. They went to the tomb. They saw it empty. And they're wondering, what, what's going on? And then they get instructions from the angel. So they go and tell them, it's in verse 13, and they went and, and, and told to, it, to the rest, but they did not believe. They were sent to talk to the rest of the disciples. But they did not believe. Many of us today, we hear the message. We read the Bible. And some still don't understand. Why why do we say some people don't understand? Because they don't obey. Either they don't believe or they don't understand. That's what they don't do, what they're supposed to do. 14. Later he appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So now he says, Jesus appeared later to the, to the rest. And, they, and he rebuked them because they did not believe the message. They did not believe that, they, you know, I've been walking with you guys for three years, three and a half. I've been teaching you. I've been telling you this, this exact moment what was going to happen. Why didn't you believe? I told you I was going to be resurrected on the third day. I told you I was coming back. Why did you not believe? 15. And he said to them, go. Now here's the command to the church. He told told his disciples here, he told his uh, apostles here, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That was a command for the church. That was a command for the the apostles to to share with the church. For every believer to become a witness, to to become an evangelist. 
So we are supposed to be teaching as ministers. We are supposed to be teaching the, the church that we are supposed to be a witness. We're supposed to go out and evangelize or make it a lifestyle that, you know, wherever we go, we're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to share Jesus with somebody else. Don't ignore it. Because if you, want, if you really want your family saved, you got to believe that. Because when you take care of God's work and you, believe, and you do what he commands you, God will do the rest for you and your family. We are measured with the same measurement. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then look at what it says, 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Now, this applies because he was talking to the apostles. He was talking to the disciples that have been walking with him, been seeing all the miracles, been seeing all the wonders. You know, they've been, they've been seeing all this. They've been witnesses at first hand. They were, you know, they were in, on the front row of the teachings of Jesus Christ. And so now he tells them, now it's time for you to be baptized. Because I know there's always something, a conflict, always, well, baptismal don't save. Exactly. Baptismal doesn't save. Like we, we were talking about the man, uh, the thief in the cross. We are talking about people in the hospital. They cannot get out. Or, uh, or people in the, in the last bread, you know, they accept Christ. They cannot be baptized. Those, those people are saved. But when you have time, like these people, when we have time, and, and we keep on saying, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready, then... There's a doubt you are saved. You were ever saved. So here he says, okay, you have come. You, you are now believers. You've been walking with me with three, for three years, three and a half. You know, and now uh, you have not been baptized. It's time for you to be baptized. And if not, then you will be condemned. You are not believers. That's what the scripture says. Let's not confuse it. Amen. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will not, by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord had spoken to them. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached every, everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompany of signs. Amen. So, so see, see how God empowers his children who truly believes, who truly have dedicated them, dedicated them lives to the work of God, to God himself. God has over empowered them. Because it's so important to fulfill, to do God's will, to do, be obedient to his word. To win the world, to win all, all people uh, that we can, to win them for Christ. To give God the glory, to give him the honor. So our lifestyle is supposed to be about witnessing about Jesus Christ every chance we get. Because sometimes we say, well, I don't get a chance. You know, we walk, we walk with people. I mean, we meet people every day. Even in the restaurant, when we're there, we're there. I mean, we can tell the, 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 the waitress, uh, you know, may I pray for a need you have or something? I mean, introduce yourself somehow, but make it a lifestyle. Let God do the rest. It's not up to us. We don't have the power to convince anyone. It's the Holy Spirit that does the rest. It's our job only to plant the seed. It's God's job to do the rest. That's, that's how it's got to be. Amen? The resurrection... Prophecy came to pass, as God said. He said he was going to be resurrected one, one day, and, and it happened. Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 through 20, and verse 1 starting there through 3. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the, others, Mary, and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to, going to the tomb. Rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like a lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. Here comes a, an angel. There's an earthquake. I mean, this man, this this people had uh, uh, put Jesus inside, make sure he was not going. To get, he was not going to get out. So they put a big rock in there so they can hold him in there. 
But it came to pass just as he said. There was an earthquake, an angel, the, 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 the rock was moved, an angel appeared and sat on the rock. So it came to pass. Who was there? Mary Magdalene and the other, uh, and the other mother was, uh, was a mother of Jacob and of John or Joseph. You know, that was, uh, that was the other Mary. The guards, were, were, the, guard, the guards that were guarding Jesus to witness, they were witnesses of the resurrection. Okay? It says verse 4, the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead like dead men. See, they were front row witnesses. We can be front row witnesses, but when it comes to sharing Christ, when it comes to about evangelizing, what's happening to us? Are we believing what the Bible says or not? Are we being obedient to what God said to, you know, that he commanded us to go and witness to share Christ, to win souls for Christ or not? The angel sent the women to witness to the disciples about what they saw. Verse 5. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Now they present themselves there and say, look, uh, I know you're here for Jesus. I know you witnessed his death. He's, I know you witnessed the crucifixion. And I know that you were sent here to seek for him. Well, he's not here. He resurrected just like he said it came to pass. Just like he said. He's not here. Now, this is what you're going to do. You go to his disciples, go to the apostles, go to the rest, and tell them that Jesus is not here. He resurrected just as he said. Just as he said. And that's what God tells us to do. Go tell people that Jesus is alive. You know, that they, he wants them saved. Share Christ with others. Share him. You know? Some, I heard people say, well, I can't. I'm too old. There's different ways of participating in evangelism. You can pray. You can uh, help with, with money to buy tracts, to buy gospels, you know, because we have people that go out and evangelize, you know, younger, younger ones. We have different ways of helping. You know, if I can't do it, at least I'm going to help. For someone to do yesterday, our, 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 our pastor from Tijuana, I mean, he was, uh, he, he was baptizing yesterday in Mexico again in Guadalajara. I mean, so many souls. And we're reaching all these other people that, they, you know, they're, they're getting disciples. These people from the uh, rehab centers and those prisons, they are being baptized. They are being one for Jesus Christ. So we're not the only ones for this church. I mean, we, we are all over, so, you know. We're making disciples, but us, we have to keep on doing what God said for us to do also. Amen. The women obey to witness to the disciples of what they saw to confirm. Now they were going to go, just as the angel told them to, to, to do. They were going to go and they were going to uh, witness. They were going to tell what they saw, an empty tomb, right? Verse 8. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped to his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There I will see, I will, they will, there they will see me. Now it's a different message here. Same message, but a different, different words. He says, go tell them you saw me and go tell them to meet me at this place in Galilee. I w I'm going to meet them there. I'm going to see them there. I mean, we have, we, God meets us here every, every Sunday, every service. Do we obey? Are we there in every service? I know some people cannot make it, but when it's up to you, when it's up to you, do you obey God? Do you obey God? Amen. 
The reason why so many don't believe and the church has the responsibility to witness the truth. Here we're going to see why so many people don't believe. We're not being obedient. You know, we're not witnessing. We're doubting. Because our action tells more than our words. Oh, I'm a true believer, but we don't, we're not acting on what the Bible says. So we don't become a believer. We become doubters. We're doubting the word of God. God says, I want you in church. We're not. I want you to read the word, know the truth. You know, you will know the truth, and you will, and, and the truth will set you free. Well, yeah, if I read the Bible, I'm going to be free. That's not what it says. When you really know Jesus, you will become free. That's what it says. When we read the word of God, is to know God, and when we know God, when we have a relationship with Him, then we will become free. Because I know so many people that are reading and reading and reading the Bible. But they're not free. you got to have a relationship with God. That was, that's what he said. You will know me. And when you get to know me, you will be free. That's what it means. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Isn't, didn't he say he was the truth? Didn't he say he was the way? I'm the way. I am life. And I am truth. So when we get to do that, then we'll become, we will become free. Verse 11. While the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything, everything that they saw and everything that, they ha that happened. What happened, remember, in verse 4, the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. They were witnessing what they saw. But look at what happened in verse 12. When the chief of priests, the religious people, you know, uh, had met with the elders and, and devised a plan. They gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, you are to say this. His, disi his disciples came during the night and stole him away while, he, while he, we were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been wide circulated among the Jews to this very day. You know why so many people did doubt it that day? Because some took advantage of the situation also. And there was a priest, it was the main priest, who made up a story that it that did not happen. He was stolen. And today, some of us, we come to church, but we don't, we're not believers. God considers a believer when you believe and you act on what you believe. Some of us only hear the word. We feel good about the word, but we don't live out the word. And that doesn't make you a believer because you come to church. You become a believer of Jesus Christ when you are acting, when you are obedient to his word. Amen? Amen. We have to show that we are truly believers, that he is alive. He is alive in me. So here, here it is. This, I mean, they, were, they gave out a bad report. They were, telling people, they were telling people, no, no, he didn't resurrect. That's a lie. That's a lie. You know, and they came and stole him. We saw his disciples came, rolled out the rock, and, and they took him away. They buried, them, they buried him somewhere. I mean, that's what they were saying. Can you, ima can you imagine somebody telling you a liar? You know, that you are telling people about something, your story or something, and, and other people are making you lie. No, no, he, they're liars. That's not true. That's not, that did not happen. I mean, but we read the word. We don't care. what We're not supposed to care in what people say, but what the word says. You know, the devil ha knows how to get us distracted, you know, and, and, and get us discouraged. But if we truly believe on the one who said we were going to be safe, a comforter, our life, the Holy Spirit, our helper, you know, we're going to just be obedient to the word. That brings life, you know, into our lives. That brings blessing into our lives. God's word says that all power and everything belongs to him and commands us to be witnesses. So remember this. God says everything belongs to him and all power. He had all power and all dominion in heaven, on earth, in and hell. 
he, he gave us that overpower that, 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 that he said that even the gates of hell will not prevail against us. So let's not stop. Let's walk with that faith, believing and trusting the one, the only one that can, you know, that's in command, the only one that can give us life and the only one that can give us, you know, uh, save us. Verse 16, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, you know, where they told them to go, to the mountains, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him. And again, but some, some doubted. Can, can I, mean, we, I don't understand this. Uh, they doubted. They've been walking with him for three years, or three and a half. And they doubted. There was, at first hand, they saw all the miracles. Everything Jesus taught, and they saw everything he did. But at this time, they are doubting. He had told them he was going to be crucified. He had told them that he was going to be resurrected. But it says right here, some of them are doubting. Wow. Then Jesus came to them and said, all oh, authority. In heaven and on earth has been given, has been given to me. So it doesn't mention the devil has any authority. God has authority in us. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus says, I'm walking with you, and I'm seeing what you're doing. I'm witnessing what you're doing. I know that I am pleased with you, but because you are witnessing, I'm walking with you, I'm helping you. And what pleases me is that you are, you are a believer, you are doing what the Word says, and you're sharing it. But guess what? God is thinking about people that just know the Bible, preach the Word, but they don't live out the Word. That's not a believer. Because even the devil knows the word of God. He don't live it. Demons know the word of God, but they don't obey it. And so many people know the word of God. They're good teachers. They're good preachers. But they don't live out the word of God. So they're bad witnesses. But take the good. And let God do the rest. All authority. We have to believe that when we all go out there, we have all the authority God has given us. We read in the Bible what he did. He flooded the, the earth one day. I mean, he opened the Red Sea one day. He opened the, Red, the Jordan River one day. Uh, he, he resurrected uh, Lazarus, I mean, dead people. I mean, he's, he healed uh, people, people that had, they were uh, doomed to death, uh, to die with the leprosy. We see all these miracles happen. I mean, uh, he healed the paralytic. I mean, he did many things that no one could do. This is a Jesus that was talking to them. He says, go and, and talk to everyone, you know, no matter what race they are. Tell them about Jesus Christ and that he's coming back. You know, tell them to become believers so that I can save them. That's all we need to do. God will save if we truly believe. We must pray for everyone to believe. To believe us and our faithfulness will heal us as we obey. If we believe. As we go out, we are, supposed to believe, we are supposed to ask God for help. We get up in the morning, God, you know, as I go out to my work today, as I go out today, Father, help me. Give me words. Speak to me. You know, help people to believe and when I share Christ with others. You know, we have to get this kind of praise. Help me, Father, to share your words and help, you know, help others for those seeds to grow in them. So we have to ask them for help. Isaiah 53 one through four, it says in verse one, who has believed our message? Who has believed my preaching? Who has believed my teaching? Who has believed me sharing Christ with them? Who has believed the Bible? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him, before him, like a tender shoot and like a root out of the dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearances that we should desire. 
He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and he, we held him in a low esteem. You know how they paint Jesus? They paint him blonde, beautiful. Some paint him black with green eyes or blue eyes. I mean, different, different. I mean, that's not him. And yet so many people keep it, buy a picture like that and keep it in their walls and their homes. Why? If we are, we are supposed to be Christians, we are supposed to be the children of God, the children of God walking by faith, not by sight. That's not Jesus there. The Bible clearly says that behind, in every image is a demon. So he does, he's not living in a picture. Never, I mean, he's, 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 the Bible describes him exactly how he is. He was not good looking. People who saw him, you know, they despise him by, the, by his looks. But what was beautiful in him? His heart. That was beautiful in him. Yeah, that's how you attract the people also. So be careful with this. Share Christ. Let God do the rest. Jesus took upon him all our sins and guilt and all our infirmities. We can be healed if we, if we believe. Verse 4. Surely he took up our pain and bore our sufferings. Why are we still feeling like that? The Bible says that Jesus already took that. Yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed up for our iniquities. Clearly he's saying here, look, you know he was, why he was uh, chastised? You know why all this happened to him? It was because of your sins. To wipe him clean. To, make, to save you. He took it upon himself. All the punishment that we deserve, he took it upon himself so we didn't get it. So we didn't get it. He got it for us. Verse 5 again. But he was pierced for our, our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. He received punishment and we received peace in, it, in exchange. And by his wounds we are healed. We all, like a sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, he was not discouraged. He saw us the way we were acting. We were not appreciating what he did for us. We went our own way, living our own lives. But he didn't get discouraged. He did not get discouraged. Well, I'm not going to get discouraged because Emilio failed me. It's okay. I love him. I'm not going to stop working and loving them just because Highland don't care about me or, or they do wrong. I will go to the crucifixion for, to save Highland. Talking to everyone, even everyone that's watching us. He went to the cross because the only way to save us was to show us. Not by words, but by action. So when he talks to us, if you love me, you will show me, not tell me. You will show me by being obedient to my words. That's how you're going to show me that you love me. And when we love him, you know, we get empowered in return for the love that we have for him. You know, he showed us the cross. You know, what do we do? We walk away from him when he tells us to do something. We don't understand the, sac the sacrifice he did for us. He, we still, we are lacking of understanding what the that our salvation cross, I mean, cost the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. We read right here how he was crucified. You know, we know that he, he got arrested. We know that he was stripped. We know that they put a, put a, a, a crown of thorns on, on his head. I mean, they stuck it. They stuck it on him. I mean, that you know, they, it, it pierced him. He, he was bleeding on his head. They stripped him. They, they put him in the jail. They took him out of jail, you know. And then they... 
they, they, they whipped him. I mean, and when, when, when we look at the, what he was whipped with, you know, there was those things that were so sharp coming out that when they hit the skin, I mean, it was just pulling back like hooks. I mean, they, it wasn't just a whip. It was something that clang onto him, you know, just sink into the skin and pull the skin. You know, and he was supposed to die, but God kept him alive. Kept him alive. 39, 40 less 1, 39. You know the meaning of the 39? It's the name of an infirmity, of sickness, of sickness that was supposed to attack us. He says, he took him away for us to become healed. So if we really want to live, if we really want to be thankful, we want to live a little better life, and we want our families to be safe, then we can believe on what Acts chapter 16, verse 31 says. Believe. Become a believer. Believe by showing him in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your whole household will be saved. That's a promise. The only thing he said, believe, means act out, live my word, and I will do the rest. I will save your family. As you go out and witness to my people, you know, for my lost children, then I will, I will come, I will send my angels to also save your family. That's the exchange. We get measured with the same measurement. Amen? God has so much for us. We need to believe. We need to believe. He already paid the price. We don't know nothing. All we have to do is just believe in him and do what he says. Our home is not earth, remember. Our home is in heaven. And as we read the Bible, he has always been in control. There's no man that has ever been in control of the world. He has allowed it just to call us because we brought it upon ourselves. But the day when we read Revelations, you know, he's going to take his believers, his true believers, he's going to take them. He's not going to let them go through no more punishment. And then destruction is going to come upon this world. It shows who's in control. He's in control. And all we need to do is say, God, forgive me, help me to live a life that will please you. Help me to become a true believer, Father. And keep on telling him, he will do it, he will help you, he will save, he will save your family. Amen? Please stand with me. Father God, we thank you, Father, for your word. I have preached your word, Father. Now you translate it. You, Father, make it grow. Help it to grow, Father. Help your church to become true believers, followers of the truth, Father, followers of Jesus Christ. Be obedient to your word, Father. Bless us and provide. Bless your church, Father, and provide everything they need, Father. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. We pray and we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11.